Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a chance to come into the conversation, uh, into the live stream. And um, uh, we're going to have a really good discussion today. This is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I think you guys are going to really enjoy uh, the dialogue that we have planned for today. Uh, it's going to be it's, it's an interesting topic. It was one that was just kind of on my mind based on an article that I read <clears throat> this morning. And uh, and I thought that I would kind of share some perspective with you on it um, and, uh, you know, kind of get your, your take on it, uh, because because I really think it's something that I, it's something that I've seen talked about a lot in the community. So I thought it might be good to actually talk about it uh, in a way that's a little more analytical, a little more scientific, a little more thorough. And so uh, anyway, before we get started, uh, I want to say welcome to everybody. Welcome to DrVoiceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. Uh, if you are not black and intelligent, then you may want to leave because this is not the place for you. Uh, but if you are black and either intelligent or trying to become more intelligent, then this is a good place for you because uh, our goal is to do a deeper dive and to promote black intelligence throughout the world. And uh, and that's what we do. That's what we believe in. Uh, we also believe in the black core of three. The black core of three means that we believe every black child or every, excuse me, every uh, black person uh, in, in our community, that all of us, we can educate our own children, create our own jobs and support black businesses. That's what we believe in. That's what's important for us. And so uh, that's 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 what we're all about. That's what we do. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, James West says, why do I got to be a beta? <laughs> uh, I, well, nobody said you have to be a beta and I don't even know you, brother, but I but I'm not even going to I'm not even it's not even like that. It's not me calling out anybody for being a beta or attacking anybody. It's really just something that I thought would be interesting to talk about because I hear people talking about it all the time. I hear people, you know, constantly using the term. Has anybody heard this? Tell me yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Has anybody ever heard anybody use that term, uh, dusty beta male? Uh, anybody in the conscious community hear people talking about that, you know, dusty beta males and stuff like that? Um, Saladin, I appreciate you too as well. Uh, anybody heard that term? Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Well, I've heard it a lot. You know, I've heard a lot of people uh, you know, do videos, especially when they're mad at somebody. Usually it's some black person that's mad at another black person. You never run short of black people trying to take out other black people. That's kind of what we have. We have this uh, kill a Negro-itis that, that has infected our community since slavery. Um, and, uh, and, and a lot of times you'll hear people use the term dusty beta male. Uh, you also hear another common term is uh, bed winches and stuff like that, which, which I, don't, I don't know how I feel. I don't... I don't use that term uh, because I, I, I don't really know why I'd want to use that term. Doesn't mean I'm dissing anybody for using it, but it just means, you know, like bed winch is kind of a, I, I don't know. I think if I have an issue with a woman, I'm a, I'm going to talk about the issue and not the person so much. I kind of think talking about the person is, uh, you know, kind of sticky territory. Like I think that you can actually express your difference in opinion without it becoming overly personal, you know? Uh, but anyway, okay, so Sandra says yes. James <clears throat> says everyone thinks they are alpha. <laughs> That's so funny. You, you're right about that. Um, okay, so as we get started really quick, uh, how many, uh, or, or let's do this real quick. You guys know in the beginning of the show, we always do the city shout out. So shout out your city or your business or your dream or shout out all three. Shout out, but just shout them out separately. So tell me your city, your business or your dream. And I'm going to shout back at you uh, for all the ones that I see. I see Chris is in here. Yolanda says it's sad that we fight against each other instead of loving. Yeah, but that's kind of what that slavery thing did to us. Uh, if you really want to understand the number that slavery did, I mean, remember, they spent they spent two, 250 years brainwashing you and then another 100 years doing the black codes and Jim Crow. Read books like Powernomics and Black Labor, White Wealth. That will really explain to you um, how deep the brainwashing is. I mean, if, if you read books like this, you'll understand. You'll say, oh, that's why Negroes are crazy half the damn time. That's why black people you know, do horrible things to each other. Uh, okay, Yolanda from St. Charles, Missouri, Tanisha from Philly. I'll be in Philly on May 19th. You can go to drboysphiladelphia.com. That's drboysphiladelphia.com if you want to come into the uh, seminar. Uh, let's see, Jay's World, Chi-Town, MD Ready from Clinton, Maryland, Raymond from Irving, Texas, Texas, Houston, Texas is where the All Black National Convention is going to be. 
Uh, you can learn more about that at allblacknationalconvention.com. That's the weekend of September 27th. I just spoke to my homeboy, Willie D, out of Houston, and uh, and I said I'd be honored if you would uh, participate with us in the convention. So Willie has agreed. So Willie D will be at the All Black National Convention, along with people like Norman Langham with Shally Moses. I'm going to try to see if I can get Dickie Dillard on an airplane to come down, and we're going to have a great time. So so uh, I look forward to that. Uh, let's see. Cutis from Chicago. Uh, let's see. True to Life says, developing business, Keegan Carter, genuine leather and exotic skins. Wow. That sounds really interesting. Uh, King, King Carver Kennel says real estate. Uh, I see uh, what is Trinidad and Tobago from Cleveland, uh, Baltimore from Lawrence. I see Nashville from King for King uh, King Carver. Uh, let's see what else. I see New York. The uh, New York business is the Royal Legacy Experience. Says Raza. Chris Love Multimedia. Elon Shakira Highsville, Maryland. Uh, Alicia from Maudlin. I love the name Alicia. Y'all y'all know why I, I love that name. Um, Freddie from Kennesaw, Georgia, Claire from, uh, does bookkeeping, Jeff Wallace, vision leaders, vision leadership and productions.com. That's a long name, man. That would be like a shorter one, like a, like a, like a, like a, um, acronym or something that might help. Uh, let me see. Yo biz, uh, Yolanda says yo biz, uh, resource consultant, uh, all black hotel, Chris love, uh, Clinton, Alexander, Trump city, Baltimore. All right. Uh, doing, doing rum, the business of rum. That sounds interesting. Uh, I, I, I know that I, know, I heard it's tough to get a liquor license. I know Dame Dash when I was working with Dame Dash a lot more. Dame was always talking about the difficulty in getting uh, liquor license, licenses and stuff like that. So anyway, let, let's get, let's start. Let's get started. Hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please hit that thumbs up button. It's very important to get people into the conversation. Also, please share. If you're on Facebook, please hit that share button real quick. Just share it to your Facebook page. Uh, so people can join the discussion. So please hit the thumbs up button, share uh, comments. All those activity is what brings people into the lives. So we can really use your help in just uh, doing things, you know, use your fingers, use your fingers. That really helps us a lot. All right. So let's talk about alpha males versus beta males. You know, a lot of us hear the term dusty beta males used all the time. Uh, the dusty beta male term, I've seen it used mostly when somebody's just mad at some dude and they say, oh, you a dusty beta male or nigga, you a dusty beta male, nigga, you know, or some woman that's mad at black men for something and they call them all dusty beta males because they don't say what they want, want to hear or whatever. And, uh, and, and, it, and I think, I mean, obviously the, the terminology is being used in an incorrect way, uh, but the Internet, you know, uh, who was it? My, my boy Black Dot did a really funny uh, little commercial where he was basically uh, telling people how to go to, how to, how to become a YouTube scholar. And uh, basically you got a lot of pseudo scholars on YouTube that, that pretend to be scholarly and pretend to have done research and pretend to, uh, you know, have credentials or whatever, but they don't, you know, they just, they just talking out the side of their neck, right? Whatever. And, uh, and, and I thought it was a really funny ad. In fact, I'm gonna try to see if I can find it. Cause um, let me see if I can find it. YouTube scholar, black dot. I don't know if y'all check out Black Dot, but I like this guy a lot. I watched some of his stuff, and I think it's really, really good. Okay, I can't, I can't find his, uh, his little ad on how to be a YouTube scholar, but it's actually really funny. He's like, if you don't, if you don't read books <laughs> and you just make stuff up, <laughs> like to become a YouTube scholar. So anyway, uh, and just in case anybody wants to know, I, you know, I, I, my credentials, you can look them up on the on the internet. My PhD was from the Ohio State University. My dissertation's online. You can read my dissertation. It took me years to finish my doctorate. I was in school till I was 31. So I don't know everything, but I know a couple of things. I know a couple of things, and I'm going to share some of those things with you. Uh, all right, so here's here's the deal. All right, so when you talk about alpha male versus beta male, um, there is a distinction. Uh, it's a distinction that's all throughout the animal kingdom. It's not just for humans. It's not just in the woke community. Um, uh, and it's an important topic because uh, in the black community, uh, we, we, we need alpha males, right? You, you need alpha males because alpha males are the ones that are going to lead. They're the ones that build. They're the ones who fight. They're the ones who stand up. They're the ones who protect. They're the ones who provide. And so uh, if you know, you guys may know, uh, just the other day um, at the at the, uh, the Met Gala, um, you know, uh, yesterday, actually, you saw where I took issue with the fact that the black man that was most celebrated at the Met Gala was this guy who came dressed as Cleopatra. Literally, his name, is, his name is Billy Porter, and he's the guy that wore that tuxedo dress. I don't know if you all remember uh, the Billy Porter tuxedo dress. Tell me yes or no. Do you remember the Billy Porter tuxedo dress? I'm trying to find an image so you can see it um, on. Uh, if you're on DrBoysTV.com, you'll see it. If you're not on DrBoysTV.com, you won't see it. Uh, but but if you want to if you want to see the tuxedo dress or the Cleopatra outfit, 
uh, just go to drboyce.tv.com uh, and I'm going to show you guys. OK, so here's Billy Porter in the tuxedo dress. Now, you all remember that right now. That's that's not an alpha male. Right. That's not that's not, you know, alpha, you know, the alpha in terms of leading, providing, protecting, uh, you know, uh, alpha ness is a function is an important function for reproduction, et cetera. Uh, and so they what they do is now the interesting thing is that it's not so much that you have the beta males out here. You have the men that. Uh, behave in a certain way, <clears throat> but here, here's a, here's a, you know, here's a fundamental fact, right? So Billy comes back to uh, the Met Gala this year because, you know, white people reward you when you are a black man and you present yourself as a beta. They do not reward you if you present yourself as an alpha. That's why I tell you guys that we, we need alpha males. We need strong men, uh, but those men have to also be strong enough to understand that, you know, you're not built to be a beta. You're not built to be, uh, to kneel. You're not built to, to reduce your size and your strength. Uh, you know, physically and intellectually just to make white people comfortable. You can't do that because you're killing a part of who you are. You're going to want to be dead. That's a cancer. That's like, a, you know, cancer comes a lot of times from uh, from taking some taking our, you know, our energy or taking something that's inside of us. And instead of letting it out, you hold it in and then it eats away at you. Right. Like, you know, like almost like, um, you know, when Iron Man is uh, when his power is let out, he becomes very strong, very powerful. But when he holds it in, the uh, the energy from the from the power source kills him. It, it, it damn near kills him, right? So for the black man, you are you are Iron Man. You are a superhero. You are you are God's gift to the earth. You are the greatest specimen that anybody has ever seen. And so when you hold in who you are, uh, it, it it kills you. That's why you see a lot of black men committing suicide. Uh, not not just killing themselves and killing each other. You know we we you know we participate in in uh, homicide and genocide because uh, they've convinced us to do that, but also slow suicide, you know, like the guy who sits in, the, in his mama's basement drinking himself to death or or stays high all the time or is constantly out here having sex, you know, raw sex with all kinds of women and risking catching diseases and, and, and killing other people, you know, whatever, like like that's the slow suicide that happens when because you because you, you meant to be something greater and you know that, but you can't, you know, you can't you feel like you can't let it out. So you hold it in and when you hold things like that in it dry, it, it kills you. That's why um, even anger, they say that anger and jealousy are bad emotions for you to carry around with you because they become toxic and they, they can become cancerous to your spirit and to your body. So let me um, show you guys. So Billy, uh, again, because white folks like to reward black men who present themselves as feminized, this goes way back to slavery. Um, uh, they, they like the friendly Negro. They like the safe Negroes. They like the gay Negroes, uh, you know, the ones that uh, that, that they think they can, you know, have sex with or whatever. So uh, here's 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 a, a striking contrast. I pointed out on Instagram this morning. My Instagram is the Real Voice Watkins, and uh, y'all will get the real on my Instagram. And uh, notice, so, so I, I decided to put together this little meme where at the top, you you think about this. You have two cases uh, with one with Marcus Garvey, the other one with this guy Billy Porter. In both cases, the black man is presenting himself as royalty. Right. As royalty and Marcus Garvey's case, you know, he's he's riding through. I don't know if it's Harlem or somewhere else, but he's looking like an admiral or a king or something. He's got on all the regalia. And uh, and they don't mention that in school at all. They don't talk about that in your public schools because they don't want the black man to see himself as the alpha. They don't they want him to see himself as the beta. They don't want the black man to see himself as the king. They want him to see himself as the clown. They don't want to see him as the leader. They want you to see yourself as the sidekick. So the schools, there's a reason why public schools. Uh, white run public schools do not teach anything about Marcus Garvey unless it's something very quick or something that defines him as an extremist. Right. Uh, but in the bottom, you have another black man who's presenting himself as royalty in the second image, Billy Porter, and he's dressed as Cleopatra. And he's got a bunch of uh, men with no shirts carrying him around. And and uh, and this is celebrated all throughout the world. This is, you know, going to maybe be the cover of you know, all kinds of magazines, you know, it'll be featured in every fashion magazine on the planet. He's going to get all kinds of financial rewards. Uh, they're going to take good care of him. Whereas the man on top, who also presents himself as royalty, well, they uh, they they uh, created false charges against him and sent him to prison. And that's what they do to all the, or that's what they try to do to all the alpha males in the black community, because, you know, they define you as toxic masculinity, or they find, or they pin something on you, or they try to engage in some sort of lynching process to take you out of the equation. And that and that's because uh, the, 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 the guy on the bottom, you know, the the Cleopatra man, it, he's not competition for them. He's not competition. He's a side piece. He's a piece of ass. You know, he's, he's something that they can take home and, and keep in the closet. 
He's going he's gonna to bow to the authority. He's going to give them what they want. The man on the top is there to compete with you for the big piece of chicken. He's the one that your wife is going to look at and say, huh, I wonder what it's like to be with a black man. I wonder, what's it, I wonder what he's got in those pants over there, right? So, so ultimately, uh, the rule of the animal kingdom is the guy at the top, you take him out. The guy at the bottom, you keep him around. You take good care of him. You know, you, you protect him like you would a woman. So uh, anyway, let's, let's move forward. So hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, also, we actually have an organization that's designed to create alpha males in the black community. It's called Black Men United. It's designed to unite and strengthen and teach and grow black men, powerful black men all throughout the world. You can join for free if you are a black man. Uh, we, don't, we don't want anybody in there but the brothers. This is for the men only. Uh, go to blackmenunited.net. That's blackmenunited.net. Make sure you go to blackmenunited.net. We also have a YouTube channel for black men at flynewbeingking.com. Flynewbeingking. Y'all know about flynewbeingqueen, but we also have flynewbeingking.com as well. So uh, black because, because black men have to organize. We, we're not organized, and that's one of the reasons why they take us out. They pick us off one by one. They can't pick us off in a group. When we, when we form a group, they become afraid of us. That's why they had laws that said that slaves can't gather in groups of more than two or three slaves. Uh, if you do that, that was illegal. Well, why would they make that a law? Just for their health? Did they make it a law just because it, they, it just came up? Did they make it a law because they just felt that way on a Tuesday? No, they made that a law because they know that black men and black women unified is a very dangerous thing. Uh, that's why black unity has always been something that the federal government has worked against uh, because they saw it as a threat to national security. So hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the thumbs up button uh, so we so we can get more people in the live stream. So let me talk about this in terms of the characteristics of an alpha male. Uh, this is an, uh, an article written by uh, by a therapist uh, named John D. Moore. And uh, and and John D. Moore, I like his article because he, what he does is he kind of breaks out the science versus the stereotypes of what an alpha male represents. Um, I'm going to tell you this. I do believe that there is such a thing as toxic masculinity, just like I believe there's such a thing as toxic femininity, right? Well, like, for example, uh, the difference between being assertive and being aggressive, uh, you know, might be an example. Or the difference between guys who, you know, who just like the ladies versus like a man who might rape you. Well, you know, obviously sexual assault is toxic, right? Uh, you know, and, and, and part of, 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 of maleness and strength in a man, to me, it comes down to not just having the power, but controlling the power and being intelligent about the power, you know, knowing how to play chess with your life instead of just always diving into any stupid situation. It's like uh, in investing. You guys, um, anybody else a stock market investor? I don't know if you uh, are following the stock market. I hope you, you, you should. Everybody in here should be a stock market investor. Uh, but uh, with, with stocks, if you if you you know, if you're in my stock market class or if you've learned about stocks from me, one thing you'll learn is that there's a universal relationship between risk and return, risk and reward in the stock market. The more risk you take on, the more return you make, the more money you make if you take on more risk. But there's a caveat to that. The caveat is that the risk must be intelligent risk. It has to be efficient risk or calculated risk. If you take calculated risk, that makes sense. But if you take stupid risk or, or risk that you, where you don't think it through carefully, then that's gonna just put you in bad situations. So ultimately, uh, the same thing I think is true when you're talking about uh, alpha maleness, you know, like uh, an, an alpha male is, is not somebody who's going to just go into battle and just run into any dumb situation and get killed. He's going to think about it carefully. And once he's made his decision, he's not going to be afraid to go to war. Right. He's, but he's going to analyze the situation, study the battlefield, prepare, you know, look at the whole, you know, you know, scenario. And then he's going to say, OK, I got it. I don't really want to go into this. I might get killed, but I'm ready to do this because somebody's got to do it, because somebody's got to protect the village, right? So uh, so really, um, that balance between balls and brains is, is really what uh, I've observed in terms of what distinguishes the so-called alpha from uh, everyone else. Because if you have all balls and no brains, then you're going to get killed, you're going to lose, you're going to get taken out. But if you have all brains and no balls, then you basically are a powerful person who is reduced to a flea because you have all this power and you're scared to use it. You got a lot of black folks that have a whole lot of power. And the only reason they have the only reason white folks give them that power is because they know they're never going to really use it. You know, black folks that have the power and will use the power. Those are the ones who become a serious threat, a significant threat. So. Uh, so anyway, moving on. So he says that being an alpha male is more involved than you think. 
He says, people, when people hear the term alpha male, it usually conjures up mental imagery of a super good looking guy who holds the traits of being strong, muscular and charming all at the same time. This classic representation of such men can be found in many modern day movies. Examples include Brad Pitt, who played Tyler Durden in The Fight Club, and, and he goes on and on and on. Now, uh, now one of the things that um, he, he covers in the article, and, uh, I, and I'm not going to uh, read every, every piece of it, but he covers like what it means, to, you know, what, where the term alpha male comes from, the link between animal research and alphas, how wolves relate to alpha males, uh, common traits and characteristics of alpha men, the difference between alpha males and A-type personalities. A lot of people think that a type A personality in a man makes him an alpha, and that's just not true. A type A personality is very different. I'll talk about that in a second. So he says, uh, before we get too involved in the traits and characteristics of alpha men, it might help to understand some background before the, the behind the term itself. I mentioned this because being an alpha male is, a multi, is multifactorial in nature. So there's many factors that determine what an alpha male is. Uh, the phrase alpha male was coined by folks involved in the field of ethology, a 25 cent word used to describe the objective study of animal behavior. Here we're talking about researchers who spent years observing uh, how various kinds of animals interact with one another in the natural environment. We get the term alpha from the Greeks. Um, and then he, he talks about uh, the certain animals. They noticed that certain animals would take would, would exhibit certain behaviors. Certain animals would, you know, be the dominant ones. They'd be the ones out front. They'd be the ones that the females would want to mate with. They'd be the ones that, you know, jumped out and, and jumped into the fight first, you know, things like that. And, uh, and so it led them to really become fascinated with the idea of, you know, what is an alpha and how does that work? And remember, human beings are mammals, right? So uh, actually, according to Professor Ken Sapolsky at Stanford University, um, the, the human brain is about 95% the same as an animal brain. Uh, he does really good, really fascinating lectures on, on the Internet about um, how he, he, he teaches he teach at Stanford University. Uh, and he's a uh, not a biologist. I forgot what he is exactly what his exact field is. But but he um, but he does these really interesting lectures where he compares the human brain to the animal brain and how humans react to situations in animals. Even though we think that we're very different from animals, we have a lot of animal traits inside of us. The, there's only five percent of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, that distinguishes us from animals. The other 95 percent is pretty much the same. Um, so here are the, the, the characteristics he lists for alpha males, and I'll go into them in detail. Assertiveness, dominance, natural leadership skills, a protective instinct, courageous, physically strong, and curious. Assertiveness, dominance, natural leadership skills, protective instincts, courageous, physically strong and curious. So uh, what, what he's been, and what he also says is really interesting is that a lot of these traits are traits that some of them are inherent. Some of them are just, so sometimes you bo you're born as an alpha. Um, and, but then what he also says though, is that a lot of these traits um, can be developed and nurtured in men, or they can be suppressed in men. So that's why terms like toxic masculinity are very dangerous if they are applied in the wrong way. You know, if you have a boy that's raised, let's say, in a very feminized environment, let's say he has no, you know, male role models who can really teach him what it means to harness his strength and use it in an appropriate way, then he can either get the wrong interpretation of what it means to be an alpha, which, you know, which means like maybe imitating his favorite rapper or whatever, or he might think that his natural male instincts are bad and suppress them. And which literally will change the, 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 the physical and chemical composition of his body. It changes who he is. You know, he, he's producing less testosterone and he's estrogenized and, 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 and he can be feminized. Right. And, uh, and, and in fact, when you go back, if, uh, pay attention to the public school. It happens to your son when he goes to public school, when that white female teacher has her image of the way of, she believes a man's supposed to behave, which a lot of times is built on white feminism, things like that. So when she sees your son, she's already got that natural instinctual fear of him because studies show that when people see an image of a black man, their their um, uh, adrenaline jumps. They get very scared. So she's already w afraid of him. And she also has a misinterpretation of his behavior based on uh, the fact that she has an idea of how she believes he's supposed to behave. Right. So when a white woman is telling a black boy. What it means to be appropriate that's usually going to end up all kinds of wrong and all kinds of backward. Yes or no? Tell me if you've seen this. <coughs> you 
Yes or no? Tell me if you, somebody talk black to me. Tell me if you're relating to what I'm saying, if you understand, if you've seen it. Because I need you to visualize times where you've seen it so you can understand where I'm going with this. Yes or no? Has anybody else seen this in the, in the public school system? Do you, Yes or no? Do you understand how this relates to the fact that black boys are, um, are actually <coughs> put in detention more than other children? Yes or no? Do you, do you understand the linkage between black boys being more likely to be put in detention and black men being more likely to be put in, in the penitentiary? The penitentiary ain't nothing but detention for grownups. And detention ain't nothing but the penitentiary for children. That's pretty much what it is. It's, it, you know, a lot of the public schools for the black male, because of the misinterpretation of, of, male, of black maleness and the, uh, the natural instinctive uh, fear and concern about allowing black maleness to develop itself, uh, you know, leads them at an early age to uh, try to, you know, marginalize, control, and tame that child like he's an animal. And this undermines his natural development into the kind of alpha males that the black community needs. That's why, that's why when I tell you guys about the black core of three, there's a reason why the first part of the black core of three that we believe in is that black people can and should educate our own children. Because then what happens is you can see these characteristics coming out in your young men and you know how to nurture that. You know when to say, whoa, 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 you're going too far. But you also know when to say, OK, go ahead, do your thing, you know, do your best. You know, just make sure you read a book before you go do that, you know, or or, hey, here's another way you might want to handle it strategically. Right. Uh, you know, but a white female teacher at school can't do that. I, I spoke at a, at, a, at a middle school one time. And, um, and it was this middle school in the hood. The school was 90% black and Hispanic. And uh, every single teacher in that middle school was white. Every, a white woman, literally. Every single teacher. I actually, for the seventh, it was the seventh grade. I spoke to the kids in the seventh grade. And they had me talk to the kids that were in their special education group. And they were mostly black and brown boys, uh, as expected. And they, could, they felt like they couldn't control the boys. And I remember they were really fascinated by the fact that I was able to control them like that. Because I, I knew these kids in my mind. I already knew kids like this. So it was easy to talk to them about whatever I wanted to talk to them because they could relate to me. And I remember the, the, the white females were like, she, she, one of them was like, um, so Dr. Watkins, what do you think about our school? You know, give us your, your honest opinion. I said, well, to be honest, your school, you know, <clears throat> it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's like a mixture between a penitentiary and an insane asylum. And um, this is why I don't get invited to speak in public schools because I say shit like that. I, I tell the truth. Um, I don't even want to go to these schools because it, may, it, it makes me want to vomit. Um, and then uh, and then the other thing they, they said was they said, well, you know, in case you haven't noticed, Dr. Watkins, we're, we're just all we're all white women. And I said, yeah, I, I did notice that. And uh, and she says, she says, so we don't know what to do. And I said, yeah, you, because your school, your school system doesn't want these boys to reach their potential. That's why you, they, that's why you don't have black males up in here uh, talking to them. That's why black men like me don't typically get invited. To come speak to these kids at the schools because you're you're this is not this the, public schools let me just say this pay attention now public schools are not educational facilities for black men public schools are fucking zoos Pub, the public school is a zoo for the black male the pub for the black male the public school is a zoo that in a zoo is designed to uh to uh engage the animal and to train the animal and to tame the animal and at best the animal in the zoo is being prepared for the circus. The circus is when he's grow, he's raised to be some rapper with you know diamonds and, and gold in his in his mouth and chains hanging down and tattoos all over his body, th thugging out for white people, promoting black genocide around the world. That's the circus. They like that. They like it when the black man acts thugged out and all that. Or the other part of the circus is preparing the black man to show his athletic prowess. Uh, in, in a very controlled setting, like like a like a tiger or an elephant that can stand on one foot, uh, and, and like an NBA game or NFL game, you know, when they when they bring him, they put him out and they parade him in front of you know masses full of masses of white people who are astonished and they they marvel at the athletic prowess of this big animal, right? Just like just like showing them King Kong when King Kong. Remember the movie King Kong when they put King Kong out there in front of in front of a. Uh, in front of all those white people, and they were like, "Oh my God!" They're like, "The king of the jungle!" And they're, they're they're scared. They're like, "Ah!" They're scared, but then they're fascinated, right? Like they're they're scared, but they all paid money to see this, right? And so let me show you. Uh, and you probably remember this uh picture. You probably remember this picture. 
And this picture didn't come out of thin air. Like this was not a, a, a an image that just, you know, like just popped up. This comes from racial history. Remember this image of LeBron James where he, uh, LeBron's a good dude. I like LeBron. So this is, this is not anti-LeBron. This is anti-white supremacy. But remember that cover of Vogue where they had the image of, now remember Vogue is the magazine, the same magazine that's going to celebrate the gay man too. They're going to celebrate the, the man who dressed like Cleopatra. They're going to have him all over. He, he'll probably make the cover for this. But they had him uh, doing King Kong where he's holding the blonde white girl. And instead of like holding a club, like a gorilla, he's, he's, he's got a basketball. Right. Anybody remember that image where they had LeBron uh, instead of being King James, he's King Kong. And that was not coincidental. That was not them just being cute. That was a very accurate portrayal of how they viewed the black man. The black man to uh, in a white supremacist society is viewed as an animal. And with an animal, you either uh, domesticate the animal so you can train him and ride him like a horse or show him off like a prized elephant or gorilla. Or you keep his ass in the cage, which is what the penitentiaries are, or the detentions in public schools, or or just marginalize the black man. And if, if that if, if one of those two options don't work, where you either uh, show him off at the circus and make money that way, or you keep him in the cage in the zoo and make money off him that way, because they make black they make money off the black men who play the sports, they make the money off the black men that are in the prisons, right? So you make money off the animals that are being paraded in the circus, or you make money off the animals that are being paraded in the zoo. Right? Do you follow me? Yes or no? Are you following what I'm saying here? And then what do you do? What happens then if you can't parade him at the circus or keep him in the cage? Well, not well, two things. One of two things will happen with the animal. You either release him into the wild, right? Where he's just he just goes off and does whatever. Those are the brothers that are just sitting on the corner chilling or or just out doing whatever that ain't really got much going on. They ain't got jobs. They just kind of out here. Or you kill his ass, right? The minute he becomes a threat, you kill him. Right. You know, and so effectively, the black man is controlled like an animal. So 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 all of this links back to alpha maleness. If you ever want to see the biggest group of alpha males together, go to uh, the penitentiary, go to the penitentiary and you will see a lot of black men that are uh, that are smart, that are natural leaders, that are very courageous. Um, you know, and, and they were courageous enough maybe to stand up to the white man and the, the white man shot him or, or locked him up or whatever. Uh, you see a lot of alpha males in prison. So this is warfare. In warfare, that's what you do. In a war, you don't really go and you don't worry so much about the little wimpy ass men that, that aren't going to be a threat. You go after the alphas. You kill the alphas off. You get rid of the alphas. You either lock them up or you use them. So anyway, let, let's, let's keep going. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please do that. Also, uh, if you uh, want to um, uh, ever uh, advertise on this platform, feel free to go to drvoiceadvertising.com. That's drvoiceadvertising.com. You can sponsor a podcast. But, uh, but you got to, you know, if you fill out the information, uh, you know, there's a low fee, but you got to pay the fee if you want to sponsor the podcast. So we don't really have a staff and all that stuff. I just offer it as a service for anybody that wants to sponsor the podcast because you guys were asking about that. Um, also, don't forget we're on iTunes. So uh, if you uh, want to listen to this podcast on your way to work or something like that, you can go to iTunes and look up my name. And also, don't forget, if you want to join our organization for black men, you can go to blackmenunited.net. That's blackmenunited.net. All right. So let, let's uh, let me keep going. Let me keep reading on this uh, article about alpha males. So he says, what's important to note here is that your alphaness is as much a function of heredity as personality. In other words, we know from research that some traits are just inherent. For example, if you are naturally assertive and that characteristic runs in your family, there's a good chance that heredity is a part of the dynamic. To this point, the old axiom that the trait runs in our family strikes a chord of truth. But that's not to say that we can't nurture nature uh, traits. For example, leadership skills can be grown when a person dedicates himself to the cause. So uh, you can develop and nurture natural uh, alpha male characteristics in men. They just have to be taught to be men. This is why... Uh, fathers are so important. Stop acting like fathers don't matter. I'm telling you, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're an idiot if you think fathers don't matter, because that would that would make you as dumb as I would be if I thought that mothers did not matter. I mean, how dumb would I look running around here talking about a baby? A baby don't need his need his mama. All he need is all the baby need is the daddy, right? I would sound like an idiot, right? So fathers matter because uh, when I talk to David Banner about this, David Banner and I talk. Uh, you know, on the phone uh, not too long ago before he came onto the podcast. The interview's out there if you want to go find it. 
And one of the things that David mentioned to me that was really powerful, um, and I totally related to it, is he said that whenever I ran into a situation where I didn't know what to do as a man, I would just act like my daddy. He said, I would just remember what my daddy would do in that same situation. And that, and that, become, that became a, a, like a, 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 a constant uh, Rolodex he could go through to know how to respond to certain situations. And I said, oh, my God, I did the same thing. I did the same thing. That's what you tell me. Yes or no. Yes or no. Has anybody ever had that feeling where you just, um, you know, you get in a situation and you don't know how to you don't know how to respond and you lean on whatever image was presented to you by your primary role model of the same gender. So some of you might be your daddy. Some of you might be your uncle. You know, unfortunately, for some of our kids, it becomes some guy they saw they, they saw on TV, some crazy rapper or something. Right. Or, and women do it, too. I bet I, I, I'd be willing to bet you that women do it as well. You know, so that role model is extremely important. Like so when these boys are exposed to men that uh, that remind them of basic ideas, like, you know, what it means to be on code or what it means to be strong or or, you know, like, no, you, you never you know, you're supposed to always help your mama carry the groceries in the house or, or no, you, you don't you don't let nobody punk you like that. Like like those are things that uh, that that men lean on men respond to that. So if you got him constantly under a, a feminized influence, a feminized influence where there's somebody constantly teaching him how to be a woman, then you're nurturing all those feminine characteristics inside of him. He's not going to be an alpha male, that's for sure. Uh, he might be looking like Billy Porter at the, at the Met Gala dressing like Cleopatra because he thinks it's cute because his mama thought it was cute when he used to put on the high heels and, 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 and carry around the purse with the, you know, with the pumps on <laughs> around the house. Right. So let, let's keep going. Um, so uh, he says uh, he talks about a type personalities and how a type personality is often confused for being an alpha. And he says that's not true. He says a personality that typically exhibits uh, an a type personality is one that has uh, high ambition and rigidity, usually very organized, focused on status, emotionally sensitive, impatient, anxious, proactive and concerned with time management. So basically, you know, uh, the way he describes a type A personality, unfortunately, is almost like you're a little neurotic. Like you're like, oh, God, we got to get this done. We got to hurry up. Come on, come on. Hurry up, get it done now, right? He's saying that's not an alpha. Like that, that's some, there might be some overlap, but that's not really the way an alpha carries themselves, you know? Um, so he says the primary difference between alphas and A type personalities, um, you know, he says, uh, a types are descriptors generally restricted to human beings. And when you think about this, it makes sense. Would anyone really describe their pet cat as being an A type personality? Uh, and so he talks about how to develop your inner alpha male. Um, so uh, when it comes to assertiveness, he says that, uh, that assertiveness comes down to confidence and confidence typically comes through experience. Uh, either having an experience that, that gives you the confidence, like, okay, I can do this or sometimes having somebody that explains it to you or trains you or, you know, helps you know how to do certain things. So, for example, um, you know, when I was young, I didn't have confidence when it came to talking to girls. And the reason I didn't have confidence when it came to talking to girls is because I didn't know what to do. But once I learned what to do, it became much easier. Right. Like I read and I read I, and I had to learn this. I, I literally had to learn that behavior by reading this book. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but I think I was 31 years old when I read the book. Uh, it's called uh, What Women Want Men to Know by Dr. Barbara DeAngelis. And I read that whole book and I was amazed. I was like, oh, my God, this is how women think. And uh, and after that, I was like, OK, now I think I understand the mind of a woman to some extent, as much as I can as a man. Right. And so a lot of times, you know, things like education play a big part in whether or not a man can be an alpha male, uh, because you your training uh, is what gives you confidence. You get, you get confidence through training or through uh, experience, or you can also get it sometimes with someone talking to you about it, uh, but you have to get that from somewhere. So what often can happen a lot of times is you can have a man who's very confident about things he doesn't know shit about. Like there's nothing more frustrating. Tell me if you've ever dealt with this. There's nothing more frustrating than a person who thinks they know everything and they don't know shit. Has anybody ever gone through that? Ladies, have you ever dated a man who was a, a dumbass? but really thought he just knew everything and didn't want to hear nothing from nobody and didn't want to, couldn't learn from anybody. 
and he did whatever the hell he wanted to do because he always knew that his answer was right. And if you proved him wrong, it only made it worse because then now you're affecting his fragile ego. And now he's pissed off at you because you were right. So you won the argument, but really you lost because now your boyfriend's pissed off at you because you hurt his feelings. Right. Like that's bullshit. Like, like really, I will just tell you the truth. Like, um, you know, people who men who, who think that way, those are just not 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 good. Those are just are good people to be around, period. I mean, in, in general. And and a lot of confidence, I think, comes down to knowing what you know and knowing that, but also knowing that you that there's more out there that you don't know than there is that you do know. And then on top of that, there's what there's what you know, there's what you don't know, and then there's what you don't know you don't know. So um, I would argue that a person who uh, can become become confident and knowledgeable is a person who also understands that you you don't know everything and you should be learning from everybody. So one of the best questions that a leader can ask, and this is for anybody that wants to be a leader, if you're a leader, never ever as a leader, if you whether you're running a company or you're leading your family or you're leading your organization or you're leading your team, never ever allow yourself to consistently be the, the smartest person in the room. Don't allow yourself to be the smartest person in the room. Try not to be. You know, uh, the, the best thing you can do as a leader is if something comes up and a decision needs to be made, ask it, you know, ask the people that you respect, say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You know, and then you can gain from all their perspectives as opposed to you always being the be all end all know it all. Cause if you do it that way, you're going to always mess that up. So anyway, let me keep going. So the book, by the way, somebody asked what's the name of the book. It's called what women want men to know. And the article can be found at guycounseling.com. And, uh, and in the, in the, and then there's a four slash and says alpha male develop trait skills. I don't know what that all means but those are like a bunch of words with hyphens in between them uh let's see here he says uh so so basically you know developing confidence is important but also exuding confidence he says matters he says for men uh that want to be alphas be mindful of your posture stand up straight when you walk uh you know that means you know so think about this how many black how many times do you see black men slouching and 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 sagging and all this other shit well, those are not those are those are characteristics of what you might call. If you want to talk about dusty beta males, when you're slouching and you're shrinking yourself down and making yourself tiny to make other people comfortable, making a white men, white men have no problem being the alphas. They have no problem being the leaders in the room. Uh, so when you're shrinking yourself down as a black man to make them comfortable, then you're becoming a, a dusty beta male at that point. You're like, I'm, I'm not no alpha. I'm just the beta. I'm just here, boss. Go. I guess for you, boss, if you got the buttered biscuits and the chicken, I'll, I'll tell you some jokes, boss. That's why black men make the most money telling jokes and, and, and being funny and being and making white people happy and comfortable. You know, the black male clown is always going to be invited to every party that white people have. So they don't want the king there. They want the clown. Um, he, he says, uh, mindful of your posture, shoulders square, chest raised, but not puffed out, puffed out. It says, uh, I'm not really confident. I'm just pretending to be that way. Or maybe I'm arrogant, not confident, but chest out. Let people know that you're there. Chin up. You know, you the man in that motherfucker. Like, don't let nobody tell you that you're not. Smile when you greet someone. Tilt your head slightly forward to show interest. Uh, uh, use a firm handshake with eye contact. That's important. Little boys should learn this very early. You, you shake hands and you, you let them know that I, I know that I'm here and, and you know that I'm here. And I see you and you see me and I'm, it's OK with me being seen. Uh, the second trait they describe is dominance. They said some people confuse dominance with over the top behaviors. In fact, dominance has gotten a bad rap because it's been assigned to aggressive male behaviors depicted on television and movies. Uh, so he says uh, <clears throat> so movies like Wall Street or the Charles Bronson movies, Death Wish or whatever, where the black where the, where the man is like uh, killing people or fighting people all the time. He said that's not actually dominance. Um, he says that uh, instead, with a specific focus on alpha male characteristics, dominance is about having a commanding presence, which is a function of body language. And that really links to very, uh, all, you know, very almost subtle concepts like self-love. Like the black man, think about this. There's nobody who's taught to not love himself more in this country than the black man and the black woman. You know, if you go to school, all they're doing every day is giving you a lesson in how not to love yourself, but how to love and honor white people. It starts with, I mean, even in church, for many you know, centuries, we saw the white Jesus on the wall. So, so we, you know, we always honored him, but never honored ourselves. When children go to school, they're learning about 
uh, you know, slave masters before they ever learn about great black heroes. Like, uh, you know, that's why we do that. You know, every day I give you guys the melanated mogul of the day. And every day I present somebody that you've never heard of, like Isaiah Montgomery, who in 1847, as a 20 year old black man, raised three hundred thousand dollars to go buy to go start a, a major cotton uh, production facility. Twenty years old, raised three hundred thousand dollars in 1867. Three hundred thousand dollars in 1867 is $4.8 million today. Imagine that, a young black man at the age of 20 raising the equivalent of $4.8 million to start a business. And you, you act like you got problems. He did it in 1867. When, in 1867, when black lives definitely didn't matter in 1867. So the, my question, <clears throat> so, the thing, here's, so my point in bringing that up is that when they're doing that to you, when they're going to teach you about Billy, they're going to teach your kids about Billy Porter before they teach them about Marcus Garvey, or they're going to teach them about Ben Franklin before they teach them about Isaiah Montgomery. They're <clears throat> they're reducing your self love and, and your self worth and, and hence your self confidence. And all and so what what effectively occurs is that you start thinking, well, you know, I, I'm I'm not much of anything. That there's nothing special about me as a black man. The only places I can dominate are on the basketball court or maybe on stage or whatever, or in the streets, but I can't really dominate in other spaces because I've never been taught anything about what it means to be strong or dominant. And I've never been taught that I'm even worthy of that. So I'm not the alpha, I'm supposed to be the beta. So anyway, he says, um, so it says having a commanding presence, which is a function of body language, a commanding presence means that I'm comfortable with who I am. You know, do you understand that the only reason that I am at a point where I am, where I'm sitting here talking to you guys every morning and literally saying about 90% of whatever the fuck is on my mind that day is because I learned how to love myself. And when I learned to love myself, I became so proud of who Boyce Watkins was that I wanted to show him to the world. And it didn't matter if you talk shit about me. It did not matter if you did not like me. It did not matter if you thought badly of me. It did not matter if you thought that I was over the top because I had to convince myself that I was worthy of that love that was necessary for me to say, you know, I want him to have a commanding presence because he's a really great guy. I like this guy a lot, right? And, and so for black men, a lot of us as black males, I don't think we're raised to really love ourselves. Uh, from the time you're a child, you're told that something's wrong with you. From the time that you're little, you're told that who you are is not good enough. From the time that you're a child, you're told that the only way you can fit in, into society is if you morph who you are, if you shrink who you are, if you change who you are, if you adopt and adapt and adopt who you are, if you act a little bit gayer, if you act a little bit weaker, if you act a little bit more feminized, then people will like you because your big black ass coming up in here with all that goddamn toxic masculinity, we can't have you in here. That's why you will get fired on your day off. That's why it's important for black men to understand how to build their own because there's, in some parts of the society, there ain't no place for you. You know, I, I, just, I, I became convinced over time. I said, I don't think there's many places in this country that are built for men like me. So I better learn how to build something on my own or I'm gonna be in trouble. So let's keep going. So he says, uh, dominance is one of those traits that can be difficult to develop, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. In order to do it, you'll have to identify several individuals that you admire who project, project strength and self-assuredness. The best way to do this is to grab a pen and paper and start making a list. A manageable list is to start off with five. Once you've made your selections, just a few characteristics, write those characteristics down next to the person's name. To help you get this started, consider the following questions. What message does this person project? How does this person project? How do they use what types of words, body language, et cetera? Who is the message being projected to? Bear in mind that your list does not have to include famous people. It can be your previous boss, somebody you play sports with, or mentor. The idea is to choose people who have dominant traits that you can emulate. And, uh, and, and for most boys, that person is supposed to be their dad, right? And for some boys, it, it, it's not their dad for various reasons, but uh, there has to be somebody in that space that they can look at and say, okay, I like that. I like the way he carries himself in that situation, that situation. So I'm gonna care, I'm gonna adopt some of this uh, in, in who I am as a person. Um, do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, you're watching drvoicetv.com, the home for intelligent black people. 
Uh, if you want to support uh, in the spread of intelligent black media throughout the world, we could really use your help. We could really use your help. We could really use your help. Uh, if you are interested uh, in becoming a patron and supporting uh, our intelligent black media, we have Your Black World News, the Black Nubian Media Network. We do all kinds of media stuff because black people have to have our own media. Uh, feel free to go to intelligentblackpeople.com. That's intelligentblackpeople.com. This is not a donation. We do not accept donations. We, but we would love to do a trade with you. And so trade means that uh, when you become a patron, we give you lots of free stuff and we help you out and hook you up. Uh, so feel free to go to intelligentblackpeople.com to support what we're doing. Also, if you want to join our organization for black men, you can go to blackmenunited.net. That's blackmenunited.net uh, for leadership training for black men. Uh, number three, leadership. He says, any survey of alpha male characteristics quickly reveals that leadership is a key trait. But what, ex what exactly does that term mean? Believe it or not, folks who research the topic of leadership actually disagree on the definition more than you might think. Um, and so what he says, uh, basically when he talks about leadership is that he says, I can tell you that in the case of alpha males, uh, it's a mixture of, of leadership, leaders being born and leaders being made. He said, leadership involves the process of inspiring others, developing people, creating a long-term vision, asking questions, including why, modeling desired behaviors, like not, don't be a hypocrite, whatever you tell people to do, you got to do it yourself, and challenging people to reach new heights. Now, a leader is different from a manager. A manager is not necessarily a leader. A manager is somebody who administers, maintains, controls, establishes short-term goals, asks the how and when questions, uh, imitates the leaders, and they don't challenge superiors or the system. So Black people in a white supremacist society are trained to be managers and rewarded for being managers. But you're not rewarded, you're punished for being leaders. You are rewarded for being the overseer, but you are never gonna be rewarded for being the revolutionary. Let me go through that again. When he talks about leaders, he says leaders inspire others. They develop people, make them better, create a vision for the long term. They ask questions, including why. They model desired behaviors. So they, they are good role models in that way. And they challenge people to reach new heights. A manager administers. They're an administrator. They maintain control. They establish short term goals. They ask the how and the when questions like how are you going to get it done? They imitate the leaders, they, so they do what their boss does, and they do not challenge superiors, they do not challenge the system. So if you're a manager, then, you know, and you're Black, you're going to do well. You're, they're going to take good care of you, because what you're doing is you are an employee of white supremacy. You are uh, a, a champion of white supremacy. You're imitating the leaders. You're imitating, you know, how many Black people do you see running for office who dress just like Barack Obama or who repeat word for word, whatever tune the Democratic Party is singing that year, right? That's imitation. That's management. Their job is to manage you. We, we A lot of us thought that Al Sharpton, for example, was a leader. Al Sharpton's not a leader. Al Sharpton's a manager. He maintains, he controls the Black community. The how and when questions. How how are we going to make sure Black people show up to vote? And uh, and when, when you need to vote? Everybody souls to the polls on Sunday. On Sunday, everybody's going to go vote because that's how we're going to keep the Democratic Party in power or whatever, right? Uh, they don't challenge superiors and they don't challenge the system. Uh, that's why, uh, for example, in the Me Too era and all that, you'll have, you know, Black leaders in the Democratic Party or whatever that will talk all day about, you know, the, the dirt that Donald Trump has allegedly done, but they won't say a word about what Joe Biden has done or what Bill Clinton has done. They don't have nothing to say about that. They, there's no comment. But when it comes to the, the other side, then they, they'll talk all that, right? So, so the thing is, though, man, this is not that, that being a manager is all bad, though. Well, you need managers for leadership to actually work. Like, every leader needs a manager. You know, like, if you're the inspirational leader for your company, you need somebody that's going to help, uh, you know, establish pragmatic goals that are going to allow your vision to be implemented, right? So, so you need the manager. But the manager must also always ask themselves, you know, who is my Lord? 
Who is my king? Who, what am I bowing to? What system am I serving? So when you are a manager, when you are black and you're being rewarded heavily for being a very good manager in a white supremacist system, who are you serving? What purpose are you serving? So anyway, let me keep going. Um, he says, uh, that's not to say that managers can't be good leaders. I'm just suggesting that the terms are not mutually, I'm not, I'm simply suggesting the terms are not mutually exclusive. You may be wondering why I'm mentioning this. Here's why. For most men who want to be alpha males, it's the leadership trait that needs to be grown and not the management trait. So y'all got a bunch of black men out here that, that go to college and learn how to be managers. And you don't have enough black men out here that are learning how to be leaders. And that's why you're losing. That's why you're getting your ass kicked. That's why you're coming in last place. That's why you're getting fired on your day off. That's why you ain't, that's why you ain't won a championship since the 70s. That's why you can't even make it to the first round of the playoffs because you ain't got no leaders. You ain't got no leaders. You, 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 you know, you don't you don't have enough uh uh Kevin Durant's and LeBron James's and all that. And you got too many uh uh, what's that guy that plays for the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder? I forgot his name, but the, the guy that shoots all the time. You know, Russell Westbrook. You got a lot of Russell Westbrooks out here, alpha dogs, or think they're alpha dogs because they shoot all the time. But you really need leaders. You need people that make their teammates better. You need people that have a vision for the future, people that are actually going to help the team win. Uh, so anyway, let's keep going. Um, uh, moving on, uh, we're talking about alpha males versus dusty beta males, as, as the term is used. And, and I figure if people are gonna keep using these terms, we should we might as well make it scientific so that we can understand exactly what we're talking about. Four, alpha males have protective instincts. He said, have you ever noticed that in the wild, animal alpha animals are very protective of their clan and of their territory? Uh, like y'all remember that goose I ran into when I was running and I was jogging along that path. I was jogging along a path and this goose was standing there blocking the path. And I was like, why is this goose blocking the path? And then and I just was like, OK, I'm just going to go around him. I guess he'll fly away. And then when I got closer, he stuck his tongue out. He was like, and he kept sticking his tongue. I was like, why does this goose keep sticking his tongue out? And, and so I was like, OK, well, this is weird, but I'm going to keep going. So I took another step. But this time I took the step a little slower because I didn't know what I was dealing with. And then he um, he lifted his feathers up like he's about to attack me. And I'm like, what? OK, what is this gangster goose? Like, what the hell, man? And uh, and so we're sitting there, and by this time I pull out my cell phone because I'm like, this is really interesting. So I start recording this goose, and I said, now watch what happens if I take another step. So I took another step, and then his neck got real long, like 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 to where like an extra two feet long. I could, swear. I mean, and I'm like, what? This goose looks like he's ready to fight me, like he's ready to attack. And what I realized eventually was that the reason this goose was getting all gangster with me was because his woman was sitting on the side of the path where I couldn't see her. And she was sitting on eggs and that were about to hatch. So he was protecting his family. He's protecting his, his wife and his child or his girlfriend, and his, whatever you call it, whatever goose is called. They're, they're, they're women, right? I guess they don't get married. But, you know, uh, I thought that was fascinating. It was interesting because nobody ever taught him how to do that. You know, this goose didn't go to college to learn how to, how geese are supposed to behave when their family's under attack. Like, no, he didn't read any books about it. It was part of who he was. God put that inside of him. And uh, and I believe that God put protective instincts inside the black man. But a lot of black men now pay attention. You talk about dusty beta males. How many times how often have you seen? Yes or no. Yes or no. Have you ever seen these videos out here where some black woman is getting her ass beat? And the black men are sitting around filming the shit or laughing and making jokes. Hey, has anybody seen that? Where, the, where the, black, the black woman is getting beat up, punched in the face by a man. And the and black men are standing, a group of men are standing and watching and, and filming the incident. Like that, that's trained behavior. That's, that's learned behavior. That's not instinctual. Men don't instinctively sit around and film a woman getting beat up by a man. Men instinctively respond and say, hey man, you know, let, let her go, get up off of her. That's what men do. But something happened with these poor men that turned them from potential alpha males into dusty beta bitches. That's it, they, they, went, they went from being, you know, uh, being the strongest, the king of the jungle to becoming Billy Porter. They, they became little gossip queens and shit, sitting there filming. How, how dare you sitting there filming a woman getting beat up by a man? Like, what's, like really? Like, didn't nobody, and I bet you a lot of these boys wasn't raised by no daddy. No man ever 
interact with them in a significant way to teach them like you don't do that like you're not supposed to sit there and watch a woman get beat up like that let me tell you a little story one time i was on an airplane and there was this it was a white woman and she was a single mom and she or at least she looked like well i'm gonna say she's a single mom she had a baby and there was nobody there to help her with the baby now just so you know any men that are listening any young men that are listening if you have a woman that has a child or you get married or whatever if she's got to fly try to fly with her don't have your woman out here doing everything by herself that's just a little tip a little pointer for you don't do that don't do that because you do all that and you have her out there by herself all the time eventually uh her 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 hero is going to come along somebody some man's going to come along and give her the attention that you didn't give her so just don't do that but anyway, so she's getting on, but maybe her husband couldn't make it or whatever. So she's on the airplane and she's got this baby and the baby was like the baby from hell. The baby was crying. Has anybody ever know how horrible it is to listen to a baby on an airplane? It is the most excruciating sound ever. This baby cried from the time the flight took off to the time the flight landed. It screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed. Well, there was a guy sitting across the aisle from her, and uh, I'll never forget this. And this guy was like a young punk. He was, he's a little punk ass kid, about 25 years old, you know, and uh, and he was already acting weird. Like we thought maybe he was on drugs. We didn't know what was going on with this guy, but I didn't say nothing because we were just on an airplane. I was minding my business. But then there was a point where the baby was screaming. It was getting on everybody's nerves, but I guess for him, he got really upset. So he said, lady, would you please shut that baby up, right? So he yells at this woman, and she's petrified that she's getting yelled at on an airplane. And do you know there that I was sitting right behind the guy? There was another man sitting up, uh, up, uh, up in front of the lady, and there was another man sitting on the other side. And do you know that it just instinctively, all three of us, when that man gave a threatening gesture to that woman with the baby, all three of us were ready to get up. We were like, whoa, no, whoa, hold up, bro. You know, like, like, like before that, we didn't say anything to him when he was acting weird. But when he was acting like he was about to threaten this woman, all three of us just naturally just responded. Like, like you're not going to do shit because we are watching you, you know. And, uh, and the thing was, it wasn't like I thought about it. You just that's what you're supposed to do. So when I see our own community. And you see a woman not getting just yelled at, but you have a woman getting beaten up, punched out in the face. And, and you got a bunch of men all watching and making jokes or laughing and filming and just observing what's going on. That's a very weird community. That's not natural. That's not natural. Like, like this slavery thing has taken a big piece of who you are. It's, it's literally done uh, a, 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 an extraction of your manhood from your body, you know, because you're not supposed to do that as a man. Uh, so anyway, moving on, um, please hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the thumbs up button. He says, uh, protective instincts in alpha males are important. Uh, he says, there's a reason why you see this kind of behavior in alpha wolves and other animal species. He said, it's called instinct. And it's directly related to survival. Pay attention. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you now. So when they come around you and they're using these stupid terms like toxic masculinity and trying to feminize your men and making them as, as weak as possible, they are threatening your survival. That is a plan for genocide. That is a plan for just, you can't build a strong community when you don't have any alpha males in that community. Everybody ain't got to be the alpha, but somebody has to do it. So he says that in the animal kingdom, the protective instinct of the alpha male is important for the survival of the entire community. The community does not survive when its men are gone. Why do you think that if you go to communities where you have the biggest fatherlessness uh, epidemic going on, that that's also the place where you see the most children getting molested. That's also the place where you're seeing the most poverty. That's also the places where the police will run up in there and shoot anybody, beat anybody, slam, body slam, big mama, do whatever they want because they're coming to your community and they're like, y'all ain't got no alpha males, so we don't have no threats. We don't have anybody here to worry about, so we're going to just do whatever the hell we want. 
we either going we, we either gonna beat you, we're gonna beat your grandma, we're gonna we're gonna fuck your women, we're gonna we're gonna enslave your children, we're gonna we might arrest some of your kids, we might molest your children because because we freaky, we crazy like that, right? They do whatever they want. They literally wreak havoc on your community because your alpha males don't exist. They're either locked up, dead, or have been turned into little Billy Porters who want to wear the goddamn tuxedo dress to the fucking Ma get Met Gala. Let me keep going. It might be helpful to think of instinct as a sixth sense. See what I was telling you all about how it was instinct when we were on that airplane? A sixth sense. Some people call it an inner voice. In any event, if you want to be an alpha man, it's important to build this skill area. Here's why. Good instincts are a key to personal safety. See, that goes back to safety and survival. Your community is not safe when you don't have your alpha males. Uh, Well-developed instincts are linked to strong leadership skills. Healthy instinctual skills are attractive to potential mates. So, ladies, if you find yourself just for some reason, if you find your vaginas drying up when you're around certain bitch ass behavior among men, just know that it's not because you're a bad person. It's because that's natural. You're not supposed to want to mate with men that don't understand the importance of manhood, that don't have any clue what manhood looks like. And I'm going to tell you this, too. You know, in our society, it's very confusing for the men. You know, that like feminism confuses the shit out of men. Men. And ladies, tell me, tell me if yes or no. Are you confused? Does feminism confuse the hell out of you? It, 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 confu it confuses me. So because it confuses me, I just I, I'm not going to take the time to try to understand your weird bullshit. Whatever you're bringing at me, like one minute you want me to take the lead, the next minute you want me to take the back seat. So one day I'm supposed to be a boy, next day I'm supposed to be a girl, then you want me to be a man, then you want me to be a child. Like, like I can't go back and forth like that. I know one speed, my, my lane is I, I have a, a template of manhood. I also know what it means to be a good person. So you know what you're going to get from me? You're going to get a good person who is also a man. That's it. So that means, no, I'm not going to rape you. I'm not going to beat you. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to mistreat you. I'm not going to tell you that you're inferior because you're a woman. I'm not going to tell you that women can't lead. I'm not going to tell you that women can't go to school or can't do things men can do or, or whatever. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to try to obstruct your progress as a woman on any level. But, but when you come at me with a bunch of weird, confusing bullshit where you're going up and down, up and down and bipolar with me, I can't go with you on that because you, because that's just too much. So, so one of the things I can just tell you for, you know, point blank period is like when, when, when Alicia and I have conversations about, about manhood and gender roles and all that, we just kind of understand what that is. She, I, I say, look, you, 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 here's voice. <laughs> here's what voice is. I've worked on him. Uh, I, I, I push him to be his, to do his best. I, I remind him repeatedly to always treat you well, and that's what you're going to get from him. But if you're looking for voice to be able to understand all the nuances of womanhood and and the back and forth and up and down and bipolar, like like one day it's this and one day it's that, I can't do that. I, I don't. I, that, that's too much for me because I'm not a woman. I can't. I can't be a woman. I can't be your girlfriend. I, I don't know how to do that. Right. So 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 the thing is, the re and the reason that's confusing is because in our society, that's what you want. We want the men to be the girlfriend. Like, well, I, you know, and, you know, like like some woman will be like, oh, I'm leaving my husband. I'll be like, well, why? Was, was he abusive? No. Well, did he did he did he was he a big cheater? Did he beat you up? Did he do something terrible? to you? No. He do well, well, what did he do? Well, you know, I kind of needed somebody who would, you know, do this and be sensitive and forget. And remember to do this. And he forgot to do that. And blah, 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 blah. And that's fine. Like like men should try. But there's only so much that we can do. Like, uh, you know, all we can do is our best. And, 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 then, and then you keep getting better so you, your best can be better than what it was before. But we live in a society where people are trained to just complain about men no matter what they do. Like, really? Like, like really? Like, think about this. How often do you really hear um, consistent complaints about the behaviors of women? You don't really hear that in society. But you always hear about the, the complaints about the behaviors of men. And, and so what I'm just saying is that overall, um, you know, when, when you're talking about a man just trying to be a decent human being and trying to be uh, what a man's supposed to be, uh, it's not something that allows him, I think, to go back and forth. Like, I can be the man all the time, but I really have a hard time being the woman. I can't, I can't do that, you know? And, 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 I, and I think that, uh, we, ladies, I think that what I would ask you to do is try to at least be clear on 
you know, on what it is that you want, you know, from a man, you know, and, 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 and the same thing with men. I mean, you know, there, there's, there, there's blueprints and templates, and I don't think we should get these templates from white people. I think white people are confused as fuck. That's why white people's divorce rates are through the roof. That's why white women are always mad at, at white men. That's why you got women out here that want to be men. You got, you know, do, do y'all know that the, that the feminists, let me tell you about the feminist movement. This is real interesting. I love studying the history of white people. They're so interesting. A um, hundred years ago, the feminists were so determined to be males that they would um, actually um, do certain exercises and wear cardboard on their bodies so they wouldn't have curves because they felt that a woman having curves made her inferior to a man. So they did not want their curves. So they would pin down their boobs and, and push in their hips and all this other stuff. And, and, and I thought that was very weird. I mean, I, I think that um, establishing an understanding within our community, you know, what we agree upon as general gender roles will go a whole lot further in keeping our families together than us trying to keep up with white people and imitating whatever they're doing. Because the things that they're doing are simply not working. White families are not strong. Uh, they're, they're, you know, like they used to be. They're, they're, they're sort of falling apart because there's this constant gender war where the women want to be men and they want to act like gender doesn't even exist. Um, I don't think black people are built that way. And I don't think that that's how you build strong families and build strong communities. So anyway, let me keep going. Let me keep going. So uh, the fifth trait of alpha maleness is courage. To be an alpha male is to be courageous. That term shouldn't be confused with risky behavior or foolish risk taking. Instead, I'm talking about men who overcome their fears so they don't become paralyzed with anxiety and indecision. So that gives an example of what I'm referring to as a gender role. Um, if somebody breaks into the house, um, you know, it'll le and the, at least and the kids are afraid. Uh, I can even I can be afraid too, but I can't be paralyzed by my fear. I can't, you know, if if her and the girls get under the bed, I can't get under the bed with them, right? I'm supposed to be the one who gets up in his boxer shorts with the baseball bat to go find out what's going on. Right. And if that means that, you know, I, I you know, if, if, if in, in fact, if that means I get hurt or whatever, then that's some, that's a risk I'm supposed to um, endure. Right. Uh, it also, you know, it, it means that if anybody gets hurt in that house or shot in that house, it should be me. It should not be one of the kids. It should not be her. And I believe that some of these roles, I think, get bastardized because we become so comfortable believing that the man is not necessary. So you have women that uh, are starting to celebrate Father's Day. Uh, you have women that are, you know, calling themselves, you know, the man of the house. Uh, you have women that really want to be men and don't believe that, that, that men matter. And then that further confuses the process because a woman like that, a woman who's trained to be a man, who's grown a penis and testicles and really it, it sees herself as the alpha male of the house, is not going to know how to respond when she runs into a real man. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have alpha male against alpha male, and it's going to be a clash. It's going to be a conflict because alpha males compete with other alpha males. So effectively, what will happen a lot of times is when you see her in the, in the stable relationship, when she's become overly masculinized, it's because she's linked up with a dusty beta male. And, uh, and that's fine as long as they, I guess, as long as they know what it is. You know, it's like she's married her little Billy Porter. And, uh, and and it's fine. OK, she's doing she's taking the lead uh, and maybe they're comfortable with this. Maybe they both grew up watching their mother uh, kind of do everything and, and, and change the oil and 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 hammer the hammer in the garage and all that. Right. And it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's because your your whole nature has been bastardized by white supremacy. So I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not saying that these are bad people, but it is fine as long as they kind of understand that. Right. So he's the beta. He asks for permission. She gives him an allowance you know, whatever, you know, and, and, and she and she's kind of the one that takes the lead. But what uh, the problem is, is, is that um, if it gets to the point where she's wanting more from him, like she's wanting him to be, you know, to be more of a man, uh, I think it's going to be very confusing for him because he's he's sort of learned from her and maybe from his dominant single mom growing up that he's supposed to let the woman take the lead. Right. And so it just gets really confusing. So I think that in general, the best advice I could give anybody when it comes to relationships is figure out where you lie on the spectrum and where you want to be on the spectrum and then figure out which kind of person fits with you on that spectrum. Right. So uh, I'll give you an example like myself. Um, you know, I grew up with I grew, I had a daddy in the house. 
Um, I saw the gender roles played out every day. I never saw my mother as, as, as a powerless person. I never saw my father as powerless. I saw my parents compromise. I saw my dad do what men do. I, you know, I saw my mother do you know, the certain things that, that women do on average. And so I knew that I was only built to have a stable relationship with a certain type of woman. I knew that if I came with if I came in contact with a woman who was an alpha female or an alpha male or who had a lot of masculine traits, then maybe she could be my homie. Maybe we could hang out. Maybe we could date a while. But I did not. I, I knew that that she's not supposed to be my wife because we're going to clash. She's not going to be happy. I'm not going to be happy. Right. And uh, and, 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 and uh, it took me a long time to figure that out, because I remember I would meet I would meet women that were really nice and I would hear all this bullshit that they're telling you about men and women are the same and and they should all sort of do the same. And if a woman wants to do something a certain way, then you should just bow down and go along with it. So and trying to be a modern man, this is where men get confused. Men try to be modern men and they don't want to like, well, I don't want to have I don't want to have any toxic masculinity. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and let her just kind of do whatever she wants. And then what happens is those men end up getting dominated and some of them end up getting abused because you're letting her just just run roughshod over your ass. And, and, you know, and, and, and pee on you and pee circles around you and shit. And, and, and then you find that, find yourself miserable, right? But again, it may work if you're built that way. Like if you're built to uh, submit to a woman's dominance and to let her kind of run the show and be the loud one and be, you know, and, and really run over the top of you, like, shut up, Billy, like, stop that, you know, whatever, then that's fine. Then it can work. But if you're not built that way, then it's going to lead to a conflict. So I'm going to just tell you, you know, I think that a man who really is built to lead and, and, and built in this alpha framework, and I guess I'm, I, I guess I would say maybe I'm in that category. I, 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 I like to think I am, you know, I don't know. I, I've always admired that. I've always respected that. Um, but a man who's, who's built in that category, who's also smart, he's not going to be attracted to that loud, overbearing, obnoxious, domineering woman who thinks that being loud and obnoxious and dominating people is, is a reflection of her womanhood. It's, it's like, you know, she's the one that, that, that hits the like button on those memes that say, if a man, if a man don't want to be with you, it's because he's too weak to handle a strong woman. No, he's too smart to be with a, to, to, to be in a bad situation. He doesn't, he's not going to go in a situation where he's going to be fighting with you all the time. Uh, he, he's, he may be looking for maybe a Felicia Rashad type woman who understands how to be strong without growing a penis and testicles, right? So, uh, so effectively, I think in our community, what's really, what really bothers me is that when you talk about, you know, alpha males versus dusty beta males, a lot of our men are made into dusty beta males. And because they're made into dusty beta males, unfortunately, a lot of women feel like they have to become alpha males. They have to embrace these masculine characteristics and that, that create weird relationships. And so the other thing that does kind of happen sometimes, here's the thing, you know, a dusty beta male isn't always going to necessarily be somebody that's going to want to uh, be the husband that that provides for you and nurtures you and loves you. Um, he doesn't feel like you need all that because, I mean, why would you need why would you need to be nurtured? And all that? I mean, you, you got you got it going on. You understand how to control everything. So 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 you don't need me to marry you and and, and be there in the house with you. Like I just I'll just come over and have sex with you. But but I'm going to leave after that because you got it all handled. You don't need me. Right. And like people like even think it's 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 weak to tell a man or to tell a woman that you need them. But really, I'll just tell you the truth. If a man really feels like you don't need him, he's going to leave. He's not going to want to marry you. He's not going to want to actually commit because he's going to be like, well, she's going to be fine. She'll be good. You know, in fact, uh, I'll give you I'll give you guys a real life example that I dated a woman once a long time ago who was a feminist, like a really strong feminist. This is what I was too young to really understand what type of woman to look for. And, uh, and she, so she hung out with these white feminists all day and she would just come back and everything was a fight. Everything was a clash. Everything was a, like, like, oh, that's sexist or, oh, what you trying to say that this ain't, that I can't do this because I'm a woman. I'm like, no, I never, you know, I didn't know. I was just saying like pass the chicken, right? Or whatever, right? Everything was always like a conflict. And, and I kid you not, here's one, one time. So what, here's what happened. I wanted to be a good boy. I didn't want to, you know, cheat or anything, but I met this really amazing woman. And uh, but I didn't do anything. I was I didn't break any rules. You know, I knew the relationship rules, whatever. And I and, and so anyway, so I went back and I was hanging out with this this girlfriend who was really she was just really mean. She was always mean. She's always mad about something. 
And um, and, and again, and, and in hindsight, when I think about it, she hated her father. And that that's that's big. That's big, guys. So if you if you if you want to get to understand a woman, ask her about her father. And she hates her father. Be careful because there's a very good chance she'll end up hating you. Same thing though for women. Ask him about his mother. Ask him about his exes. If all his exes are whores and bitches, and his mama's a, a you know a block a blankety blank then he, he think he's going to think that about you at some point. No matter what you do, you can try to be the one who's different, but it don't matter because he's already written the end of the story before the story begins. So anyway, I remember we were talking and she said something like, um, I think I said something like, I said, do you, I don't know, do you act like you don't need me? Do you really need me? And she was like, well, I'll be all right. She said, well, you, I mean, if you left, it wouldn't be no problem with me. I'll be fine. I was like, so really? So if I, if I walked away, you, you'd be okay with that? Like, you'd be all right? It wouldn't be a big deal to you? And she's like, you ain't gonna get no drama out of me. I'd be fine, blah, 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 right? So you know what I did? I broke up with her, <laughs> you know? and I did and it, it because all the guilt was gone. All the guilt was gone. It was just like, oh well, then shit. If I if if, if I'm not needed here, I'll be over there. I'll see you later. Have a nice life. And uh, and and so the thing about it is that you know when you come in and you and you are the woman and you're presenting yourself as the alpha male. And you are, you know, number one, it's going to lead to a lot of conflict. And number two, if the if, if a lot of men, if, if the man does not, and I can't speak for every man, so don't, please, let's not force me to try to do that. Because And, and I, I apologize if, if it sounds like I'm doing that. But a lot of men, if you make him feel like you don't really need him and you're going to be good without him, then he's going to go off and go do something else. You know, uh, a lot of, you know, letting a man know that, that he's needed and he's important Um that that's pretty huge in a relationship. Men like to feel needed, you know, and they like to also feel appreciated. You know, I don't know who told women that it's weak to tell a man that you appreciate him and and all that other stuff. But that and that's the nonsense that sometimes I'll hear from the white feminist community. I don't hear that from a lot of good black women. The good black women that I know, like the ones that I talk to and interact with and stuff like that, they they don't buy into any of that nonsense. And um, and I want to apologize to them for any men that that are behaving in ways that are unethical or unfair to them. But um, but you know when I hear the white feminists, it's confusing as shit. It's like one way, it's like wait a minute, one one day you want to be a woman, next day you want to be the man. I don't know what the hell that is, and you can't form stable relationships or stable families without having a stable understanding of who of what everybody's role is. So every relationship is individual. Uh, you decide with that person what what each person's role is going to be. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily follow anybody's blueprint. But I do believe that when you hook up with somebody, you really want to take the time to understand what, you know, what are your politics? Like, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Because, um, because I can just tell you, if, if you're, if you're, if you are a black woman and you tell me uh, that you buy into like all the, the heavy white feminist stuff or and then the Me Too movement and all that, I, I know that I can, I might be able to be your friend, but I can't be your husband because that's just not going to work. It's not going to make you happy. It's not going to make me happy. It ain't going to work. All right. So anyway, please hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please do that. Also, um, don't forget, if you want to uh, support the spread of intelligent black media, feel free to go to intelligentblackpeople.com. That's intelligentblackpeople.com. If you are a black man and you've been listening to this conversation or you know other black men who, um, you know, can use some help and guidance on manhood uh, and, and rules of manhood, wealth building, power, strength, all these other things, have them join blackmenunited.net. Um, they were started by me and Andre C. Hatchett who's a real strong, just a good brother. I mean, smart black man, love this guy, have so much respect for him. He, he founded uh, the blackrealestateschool.com. And uh, Andre is, uh, I like Andre because Andre, uh, he loves black women. He, he thinks black women are the most amazing creatures on the planet. Um, he is uh, very intelligent. Uh, he actually bought a home at the age of 22. No, he doesn't make excuses. He didn't say, well, only, you know, because I'm only making $15 an hour, I can't afford to buy a house. He figured out how to buy a house at the age of 22. That's what a man does. A man just kind of figures it out. You go do what you got to do. You don't sit around whining and complaining about what the white man does to you because what you're kind of admitting is that this other man's dominating you. Like, oh, he's putting his penis in my butt and there's nothing I can do about it except sit around and cry. Well, that's not what you're supposed to do. You know, even if he does, <laughs> even if he does rape you, you, you fight. You got to fight back. You know, like, like you're supposed to say, no, I'll take the bullet in the head before I let you rape me. Right. And so there's certain instinctual things about manhood that I just happen to believe. And um, and I and Andre believes the same things. And that's why we started BlackMenUnited.net. So join BlackMenUnited.net and, uh, you know, help form this coalition. 
Uh, so anyway, so he, he gives tips on developing courage, which is the fifth attribute of the alpha male. Uh, he says uh, to develop courage, write down your specific fears, uh, look for the root cause of your fears, identify areas in your life where you've demonstrated courage, develop a plan to transfer courage from one area to another, engage in cognitive rehearsal as part of assertiveness training. So replay it in your head, Re replay yourself over and over again, doing the thing that you're afraid to do. It's very important. Trust your instincts and in decision-making. Recognize that courage sometimes means going against the grain. He says, in my study of alpha males, I've observed that most successful men have learned to modulate how the trait of courage gets expressed. In other words, these men don't put purposely or don't purposely place themselves in risky situations in order to demonstrate that they are brave. Instead, they've learned to become less fearful by making wise choices that reduce risk as much as possible. So as I was telling you guys earlier, um, you know, a characteristic of an alpha male is not somebody who jumps into the fire and jumps into any stupid situation just to prove that they're the man. Uh, an alpha male is somebody who is not scared to be the man, but they've carefully thought about the situations that they want to get into. In other words, they've learned how to play chess and not checkers. They're very strategic about what they're going to do. So uh, an alpha male isn't usually somebody who's going to get shot up in the club because he, he's going to be like, well, you know, I don't think I want to go hang out in the club because that's when niggas get shot. Excuse my French. I didn't mean to say it that way, but y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all follow what I'm saying, right? So anyway, let's keep going. He says, but when these same men do find themselves in challenging situations, they don't shrink away. Perhaps the most effective way to learn more about courage is to study it, is to study it. So you can read books on courage, et cetera. He talks about uh, number six, the sixth attribute is being physically strong. Um, and uh, he just says basically uh, that some sort of physical fitness is important because physical fitness, the more physically fit you are, the more your testosterone uh, is flowing through your body. Testosterone is also linked to um, not just what you do physically, it's linked to courage, ambition, things like that. Uh, and if you want to talk about uh, emasculation and why they want to zap the testosterone out of the black male body, um, I'll give you an example in, a, in, the, in the case of a story that a guy told me. Uh, there was a guy I met who told, he came to me, he said, Dr. Boyce, he said, getting fired from my job was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I said, well, tell me why. What, what was your story? And he said, uh, he said, I was going to work and I hated this job and they were treating me so bad and I felt so oppressed and, and depressed. He said, uh, he, he said, in fact, it was so bad that he said all the testosterone left his body. He said, I couldn't, he said, I, I became like a woman. He said, I, I was, I would cry a lot and I would stay in the bed all day. I was depressed all the time. Not that all women do this, but, you know, you just imagine a woman on her cycle on the worst day of her cycle when she's bloated and things like that. Like he said, basically, um, I just became a master. I couldn't perform for my wife. His, his penis would not get erect anymore. And uh, he gained all this weight. And, uh, and, and basically, he said, the doctor told him, you have no testosterone. That's why your, your body's reacting this way. And I said, wow, that's really deep. I said, man, this, so they really emasculated this man. Like, they physically emasculated him. And that's what racism does. And, and, uh, and so he said the best thing that ever happened to him was when he quit his job. But even then, he showed me this big box of pills he has to take just to stay chemically balanced. Because literally, the racism on his job disrupted his chemical balance. So when I say that 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 this system is unnatural, I mean this system is unnatural. Like they literally took away his natural manhood by making him into a Billy Porter, right? So uh, effectively, you know, the reason I advocate that black males, especially black men, if you got a son that's got natural alpha male characteristics and he's already courageous and and ambitious and and strong and he's a leader and things like that. Train that boy to start his own business, to know how to start his own business. It doesn't mean that he has to. He, maybe he can go work for somebody. That's fine. But if you really want your son to be happy and you don't want him to want to one day jump off a damn building, like make him force him to spend as much time learning how to start a business as he spends learning how to play sports and all this other stuff. Because what happens is we take our alpha male characteristics and we apply them to basketball and football or learning how to be the best rapper on the stage. But we don't know how to be bosses, and there ain't nothing worse than uh, than to be uh, than to be a boss, have have the boss's brain in an employee's body. Ain't nothing worse than to be an alpha on the inside, but you got to be a beta on the outside. I'm saying ain't nothing worse than being a great man pretending to be an, an ordinary man. And I'm gonna tell you, that's what happens to so many of our black men. They end up having to bow down, kneel down, put the head down, cower, slouch sag their pants a little bit, let them know the buttholes available, you know, and then just become little punks 
because there's no place for them to roar like the lions that they're meant to be. Nobody ever taught them that that's okay. Everybody tells them that that's toxic masculinity and they, they're taught to suppress all of that. So, so train your sons on how to build, train your sons on how to own, train your sons on how to be bosses. It does not matter. If a man really wants to be a boss, he's not going to care if he's the boss of a little tiny company that ain't making no money. For him, it's just important to be the boss. You know, I got more satisfaction. Do you know that I got more satisfaction from running my own business when it was making $10,000 a year than I got from being an employee making $115,000 a year? Do you know that? Like, I felt better about life. I felt freer. I felt stronger. I felt like more of a man running my own business that was making 10 grand a year than I felt being a, a little employee making 115 K. No, no disrespect to employees. A lot of the people work for other people. That's fine. But I'm telling you, options are the key. He's just got to have options. He may not ever use the option, you know, but just just, just you know, because, you know, just because you, you got a gun don't mean you got to squeeze the trigger, but you should have a gun just in case. So knowing how to start a business is your son's weapon. It's your daughter's weapon. Have them put that fucking weapon in the closet in case somebody tries to break inside the house. Let me keep going. Number seven, the seventh trait for an alpha male is what they call curiosity. He says the final trait of an alpha male, uh, he defines that basically as intellectual curiosity. Uh, he says that if you look in the wild, it's hard not to notice that most alpha male wolves are generally curious. They investigate what's going on in their environment and then use or acquire skills for the future. If you want to increase your intellectual capacity, it's important to have an open mind. So again, if, you, if you're dating a man who thinks he knows everything and his, he's closed minded, that's not an alpha male. That's an insecure, dusty beta male because he's threatened by anybody that challenges what he knows. A confident man is very confident in what he knows, but he's also confident in that he's going to be better if you teach him things. So a smart man will learn from a good woman. A smart man is not going to just tell you to shut up every time you try to teach him something different or that will help him grow. So same thing is true for men. I, that's my advice to you. You know, somebody, you know, giving you new information is not them challenging you. It's an opportunity for you to grow. So what he says basically is that Alpha males tend to be generally intellectually curious. They want to learn because they want to be the best leader possible. A good leader is somebody who not only acquires as much skill as possible. That's why education is so important for the black man. Not necessarily school, but education and knowledge, right? Knowledge and education are very, very important. But also he wants to be the best leader possible by having the most skill. And also he wants to be the best leader possible by having the most information, right? When you have skill, combined with information, then that leads to effective leadership, right? So, so you're, you're making strategic decisions and you're going hard because you got the courage, right? So you're not scared of nothing, uh, you know, and you're inspiring others to follow you, but you're leading them to a good place. So in fact, you know, few things will turn off uh, a smart woman than a man who takes the lead, who, who leads without information, who leads without knowledge, who doesn't want to hear any other points of view, who doesn't research and think through the next move. Because remember, when you're a man, you are there's part of you that's a natural head of the family. The mother heads the family too in her own way as well. The, the, the leadership role of the mother is very, very important. The queen matters, right? But the king also has a really important job where you've got a lot of trust. Your kids trust you to keep them safe. Your woman trusts you to make sure everything's taken care of. So what, what you want to do as a man is you want to pick up skill and you want to get information and you want to learn so that when you take all this trust, you're not going to go do something stupid. It's going to get everybody hurt. But here's the thing, too. I think for ladies, this is my advice to women that, that respect what I'm saying here. So I know some of what I say is hard to digest because it's not politically correct. It's not what you're going to hear on ABC News or CBS because I told you white folks are crazy. But you know, for ladies, you know, I told my daughter this. I said, when you pick a man and you pick him to be the alpha male of your household, you know, you can't micromanage that. You know, you can't be up his ass so much that he loses his courage and confidence. You know, a man gets a lot of his courage and confidence from the confidence that's shown by his woman. Like when the woman is cheering him on, that's why little boys, when they're 12 years old, they love it. They're so proud when their mamas are in the stands saying, that's my baby. You go, baby. They love that, right? And it makes them play harder. 
But I was in my football game when I was 12, and I, I used to run back the kickoffs, and I ran back the kickoff, and I got tackled. I almost ran back for a touchdown. I was at the 50-yard line. I got up, and I looked straight up in the stands, and I saw my mother say, cheering for me, and she was so proud. And that gave me a burst of energy. Another time when I was 14 years old, I was running the 200-meter dash against this boy named Lamont who was super fast. And uh, I mean, he just came out of the blocks like nobody's business. I had raced Lamont in the 100 meter dash. Lamont beat my ass because he he because came out of the block so fast I couldn't catch him. You know, a little short son of a bitch. But anyway, I ran against Lamont in the 200 meters, right? And I was afraid, uh, you know, because he killed me in the 100. So, so check this out. So I, I line up in the starting blocks and Lamont is like right outside of me, right? So I can watch him as we're coming around the curve. So they said, uh, so they said, uh, uh, run a second mark. So I get in the blocks and I'm, again, I'm really nervous, but my mother's there, my little brother's there. He, my brother was about maybe three at the time. My sister was about seven or eight or nine or something. And uh, so I'm sitting and he's like, run a second mark. They get in the blocks. He's like, you set, bang, right? So we take off, right? And Lamont blasts out like a bat out of hell. I kid you not. The boy, I mean, he was gone. I said, man, he's going to kick my ass again. So check this out. So I'm running, and I can't stop. It's the 200-meter day. I got to run 200 meters. So I'm running around the curve, and, and then check this out. It's like a moment I'll never forget. It's like it happened in slow motion. So I'm running, and I see my mother sitting there, and she's and my brother, my baby brother's there, and they say, go, Coco. And my mother's cheering for me. And do you know, at that moment, it was like I had rocket boosters in my ass. Like, it literally gave me this burst of energy to see my mother in the stands cheering for me. And, and I just like, boom, like hit a second gear. And then Lamont started, I started reeling him in like a fish. Like, he was getting closer and closer and closer. And I chased him down, and I barely beat him at the finish line. I ran my fastest time ever. All because my mother was there cheering me on. All because the most important black woman in my life was giving me encouragement. If my mother had not been in the stands, I would not have won that race. I'm absolutely convinced of that. And so the thing is that a woman has a lot of power in a man's psyche. That's why people, people, you know, people act like women can't be abusive. No, a woman can be very abusive emotionally if she wants to be. They, they stop acting like men are the only people who are capable of administering abuse because we're, all, we're the only ones who have big muscles and can beat people up. You ain't got to beat somebody's ass to be abusive. You beat them down psychologically. Sometimes that's worse than an ass whooping. So the woman has power, you know? And so when you're dealing with that man, you got the power to either crush his spirit or to lift him to the highest heights he's ever been. You know, so when he goes out and he's doing his best and he wants to be, you know, he's decided I'm going to be an alpha. I saw the Dr. Boyce video and I saw the characteristics, of, you know, of, of, of an alpha male. And I want to make myself into a better man. And, and he's got all the, you know, he, he's focusing on all these things. You know, he's learning and he's he's gaining his courage and he's he's uh, picking up all the traits, which are on the list. What was it? Assertiveness, dominance, natural leadership skills, protective instincts, courage, physically strong, curious. He's doing all these things to try to be the leader that you want him to be. Well, he ain't always going to get it right. Sometimes he's going to make a mistake. Sometimes he's going to fuck it up. Sometimes he's going to, you know, tell you we need to drive this way. And really, the restaurant was that way. And, and, and the last thing he needs when he makes that mistake, if he's a good man who's trying to do the right thing, the last thing he needs is somebody in his ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you little dumb motherfucker, you need to stop yeah, yeah. No. If now, if he's an asshole, he's going to cuss you out too. And then your whole family is going to be destroyed because you're going to have two Negroes fighting. And, and that ain't going to work. But if he's a decent man, he's going to sit there and he's going to listen to you and let you just yell at him and beat him up. And, and, and some women don't see that. They don't understand when you're expressing that frustration. Maybe deep down, maybe subconsciously, you're really just mad at your father who is an alcoholic who abandoned you. And when you see him behave in, in, or, or come up short, you know, you're, it's triggering you. It's reminding you of the disappointment you had as a little girl when your daddy didn't pick you up for the daddy-daughter dance when you were eight. Or maybe it's reminding you of your ex-boyfriend or your, or your child's father who, who wasn't the man that you thought he was going to be. Maybe whatever it is, 
But but you expressing your frustration, you're expressing it in an abusive way. I mean, every abused person that most abused people that I know, actually, they don't see themselves as the abuser. They actually see themselves as the victim. Most abusers I know actually think that they have, were justified in their behavior because somebody triggered them. Like, I wouldn't have done it if she hadn't have done this to me. Right. Or I wouldn't have yelled at him if he hadn't have done if he hadn't if he hadn't come had to come up short, if he hadn't kept on messing up the money. You know, you know, and I just think, you know, like if you're going to be with somebody, be with them. You know, commitment. Commitment is a word that people do not fucking understand. People do not understand the definition of the word commitment. I'm convinced of that. People do not know what commitment means. You know why? Because if people knew what commitment meant, the divorce rate in America would drop by 80%. Commitment does not mean I'm committed to you as long as you do what I tell you to do. Commitment does not mean I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this as long as I'm happy. right? Commitment does not mean like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stick with it until you piss me off. Or until I get lonely or until I just I just get bored and I just decide I'm going to do something different. That's not commitment, man. So, so just shut the fuck up with that bullshit. That ain't, you ain't committed to shit. That's conditionalized behavior. That's that's, you know, fair weather, fair weather stuff. That's just like, oh, well, I you know, that, that that's like uh, the new edition song. Can you stay in the rain? Well, your answer is obviously no, because any person that understands commitment, what it really means to be committed to something or someone. They understand that that means you ride that motherfucker till the wheels fall off. But we don't honor commitment in this society. We ridicule people who are committed to something, especially if it doesn't go right. You know, like, like we'll make fun of that woman who stood by the man, even though he, he, he did some stuff that got her in trouble, got her shot or sent to prison. I'm not saying that that's a good thing. It's a terrible thing, right? But we'll make fun of her for that, you know, when really, even though it's unfortunate and he certainly deserves the blame for what happened, you know, I actually secretly I honor that. I say, wow, what a great woman. I just wish she could have had a, a, a man that was worthy of that level of commitment. That's what I think. That's what I think. Well, you know, when I see the, all the women in prison, you know, right now because they stood by their, 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 their husband or boyfriend or refused to, you know, to uh, cooperate with the cops or <clears throat> whatever. I'm not saying that it's good. I'm not saying it's smart. You can think what you want about it. I'm not telling you to change your opinion. But honestly, I see those as good attributes. But those attributes were um, taken. Someone took advantage of the fact that you were a good person. That somebody built you to be solid, but you were not with a solid partner. You know, so solid people deserve other solid people. And, and when I think about what commitment means to me, commitment does mean that I'm, I, might, I might have to go down with you. You know, commitment means I'm not going to jump ship. You know, if I say I'm not going to jump ship, commitment means maybe I might end up taking a bullet. You know, like I like don't act, don't even act like I wouldn't take a bullet for that woman that's in my house. I'd take a bullet in a second, even if it was over some dumb shit that she did. I wouldn't, you know, so so I, what I'm saying is that if you're if you're a smart person and you talk about relationship stuff, you gotta choose carefully. People don't choose carefully, they don't take their time, they rush into shit, and then they end up feeling like it was somebody else's fault because it didn't work out. Sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes it's your fault because you took two weeks to get to know a person when you should have took two months or maybe even uh, three months or four months or whatever. Um, but once, you, once you've done your research and you've decided this is a solid person, this person's worthy of my commitment, I'm going to make a commitment to this situation, then commit to that shit. You know, I mean, commit to it. Uh, you know, I'll give you another example. Uh, when I saw that whole thing go down with uh, Ray Rice, you know, and his wife, um, I didn't like it at all. I, I hated it. Remember, Ray Rice was a football player who punched out his, his, his wife on the elevator. And I thought that was a, egregious, terrible. A man should never hit a woman under any circumstances. But then I saw his wife say, you know, we're going to work this out. You know, OK, thank you uh, for the attention, but we're going to work this out because I want my daughter to have her father. And, uh, and I believe that he can be redeemed. He's 27 years old. Uh, we're going to go get therapy. You know, we're going to figure this out. And uh, and I remember how many, you know, of the feminists called her stupid and like, why would you do that? You know, and, 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 the, and the thing is, it, it bothered me because it was kind of like, 
because the black this black man had made a mistake, they literally acted like he can never ever become a better person. Like he can never learn from his mistake. Like like he's done. And your daughter should be fucked over and not have a father in the house because he clearly can't have ever done anything good for anybody because look at what he did in that elevator that night when he was drunk. And then now, now pay attention, mind you, it's fascinating though how they won't hold a white woman accountable for anything she does while she's drunk, right? That's how the whole sexual assault conversation occurs, right? Like I could, I, I, I told you I wanted to have sex with you, but you shouldn't have listened to me because I was drunk because I'm not accountable for anything I do when I'm drunk. But the, this young black man, when he's drunk, because he happens to be a football player who's very strong, filled with testosterone, probably taking steroids and shit. You know, he punches, you know, he does something he shouldn't have done, you know. But but the drunk excuse, the drunk I'm not accountable excuse is not allowed for a black man, but it's allowed for a white woman. Right. That That's just a, a little side note. But the thing about it was, you know, when I when I saw what Ray Rice's wife was trying to do, I had a tremendous amount of respect for the decision because I it was her decision. And also. I kind of admired that in a weird way, not because I thought that it's okay for people to go punch people out, but I kind of said, man, that's a really solid woman. I hope that he becomes, you know, I hope he maintains and becomes a solid enough man to deserve a woman who's that solid, you know, who's really going to try to work it out. Because if it doesn't work out, a lot of people are going to say, you were stupid. You shouldn't have done this, right? So somebody who will just kind of forgive and keep and stick with the horse that they bet on in the first place. Those people, you know, you could argue that maybe the decision wasn't the right one, but you cannot argue that those people are not more solid than the rest of us. You cannot argue that those people don't understand the word commitment a little bit more than everybody else. You know, you know, and, and again, it's a very weird, nuanced kind of conversation to have because everybody ain't going to get it. People are going to interpret it in a stupid way. That's why I tell you guys, my platform is only for intelligent black people. It's not for idiots. Idiots, idiots are going to say that, well, well, Dr. Boyce was saying it was okay for Ray Rice to punch out his wife. No, I've never said that that's okay. Um, you know, but, but the thing about it, the thing about commitment is that there's no such thing as a risk-free commitment. That's what people don't understand. So people, when they, when they, when they remain committed until, they, until something goes wrong and then they're not committed anymore, well, fuck you. You never know what commitment was anyway. Seriously, no disrespect. I know some people, you know, people have divorces and things like this. So I'm not making fun of you. That's what you, but I'm just telling you, like, seriously, I encourage you to reconsider what commitment really means. Commitment, commitment means I'm going to do this shit. You know, when I asked my dad, I asked my father, I said, daddy, I said, what's the secret to you and my mom, you and mama being married for 45 years? How did y'all, you know, a lot of people can't stay married for 45 minutes. How did y'all stay married for 45 years? And you know what my dad said? He said, it's easy to stay married for 45 years. You just don't get divorced. That's what he said. He, said, he literally broke it down to a functional activity. Like, you know, he said, you just don't get divorced. He said, I, I committed to that woman and that's where I'm at. That's where I'm going to be. You know, and, and so the, the problem, and so the problem is that because we have um, morphed uh, the definition of commitment and we've, we've, we've misaligned it in terms of what it means, uh, you have a lot of people that that make fun of people who think that way. They think something's wrong with you. Now, I'm not telling you to change who you are. I'm trying to say, though, if you are a solid person, and if you are, if, you, if that's the person you are, if you are a person who either is or wants to be a person who really, truly understands what commitment is, and, and you want to commit to people, you want to be loyal, and all these other things, uh, raise your hand. Tell me yes or no. If you want to be in this category, if you want to be in this category, I want to say that I applaud you. And I also want to say that you should not let people make fun of you. And then, you know, last but not least, I will say that sometimes it won't work out for you because you're not in a world full of solid people. But I'm also going to tell you that you need to take your time in making sure that that good love that you offer to the world, whether it's friendship or business partnership or relationship, whatever it is, that that good love you offer to the world, that you only offer that to people who are worthy of that. So solid people need to take the time to find solid people. So I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, in my life, I've always wanted to be a solid man. Solid meaning loyal to the fucking, to, to a fucking fault. Uh, I'm talking about ride with you till the wheels fall off. Like, like if I'm in the car and the bullet comes, I might take the bullet too, right? And so in order to do that, 
you know, I knew I had to be very careful about who I allow into my life. I had, if I picked a woman, I had to pick a solid woman, a woman who thinks the same way, you know? Uh, so, so solid people should not be with fly by night people because they're only going to hurt you. They're going to hurt your feelings when they give up early and you don't give up. It's like going running. If you go on, if you go running and you're trying to run a marathon and you, you don't run with a person who can't get, who can't cover 200 yards, right? <laughs> like I know that from running, like, like if, 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 a, if the person can only run 200 yards, and you're trying to run a marathon, you don't run with that person because they're, you're going to be running by yourself. So find another marathon runner. If you're solid and you are loyal and you are committed and you have a definition of what that means, get to know people to make sure that y'all see eye to eye on that so that you can go into that and bring your excellent loyalty to a situation that makes sense for you where somebody's going to reciprocate. That's something that it took me forever to learn that it took me forever to learn like what loyalty really means. Like I knew it and I knew I had it in me, but I didn't really nail it down to a precise definition until probably less than maybe a couple of years ago. And I'm going to tell you, um, I've, you know, I've been hurt because of that, you know, but that doesn't change who I am. You can't let the weak, the failings of the world change the core of who you are. You know, that's that's your measure. Of strength. That's your test from God. So make sure you go past that test. Keep being a good person. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. So I hope that this conversation was helpful to you. I know that it was different from uh, the typical conversations and stuff like that. But then again, y'all know, when y'all come to our channel, we might talk about anything. Uh, but uh, before we go, do me a favor. Please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please share this uh, conversation to your Facebook page. Um, uh, don't forget the podcast is on iTunes. If you go to iTunes and search for my name, you can download the podcast there. Um, also, if you want, uh, if you are a black man, you want to join our organization for black men, you can go to blackmenunited.net. That's blackmenunited.net. Uh, also last but not least, I always give you guys the melanated mogul of the day. Since none of us learn real black history in school, uh, we, we're going we're to play catch up. So here's our melanated mogul of the day. His name is Ernie Green. This is the cartoon version of his, uh, his face. And, uh, and I'm going to read to you about Mr. Ernie Green, who was born in 1938. His industry is football and manufacturing. After retiring from the NFL in 1968, Ernie Green co-founded Ernie Green Industries Incorporated, a manufacturer of auto parts in Dayton, Ohio. In 1987, Green established Florida Production Engineering, a wholly owned subsidiary of EGI, of Ernie, Ernie Green Industries. Uh, or Ernie Green, yeah, Ernie Green Industries. FPE, which is a Florida production engineer, now ranks among the industry's leading manufacturers of chrome-plated and metal stamped parts. So this is Ernie Green, and this is this is his real life picture, and that's our melody and mogul of the day. Uh, if you want to teach Black history in your home, because uh, we told you guys we believe Black people should be educating our children, uh, feel free to go to Melanated flashcards.com. That's melanatedflashcards.com. And we have lots of black history flashcards like melanated monarchs and melanated minds and all this other good stuff and also melanated moguls because your children should learn black economic history so they can find their superheroes in their own community and not elsewhere. Okay. So feel free to go to melanatedflashcards.com or if you want to check out our financial flashcards for children, you can go to financialflashcards.com. That's financialflashcards.com. Or you can also go to um, financialworkbooks.com if you want to check out our workbooks. Uh, somebody said I should put all that on one website, and I probably should, and I will at some point, but y'all know. I, I'll get around to it when I get around to it. So uh, anyway, guys, take care, and I hope you guys have a great day. And please hit that thumbs up button before you go, and I appreciate you hanging out with me for uh, this important conversation. I think this is important for us to discuss codes of conduct in our community. So take care. I'll see you guys soon.